<clears throat> All right. Second time's the charm. All right. Let's see how everything's looking. I would at least hope all right. My mic seems to be a little high though. Let's see if I can adjust that. this down of course I need to get things going hmm promise I'll be starting here soon anyone here at the moment, but I can still get started. Let's see if anyone joins up. Okay. Um, I do need to check real quick and see if the volume's in. It's going to be forever time I start this, but I need to make sure. Turn it up just a little bit, probably to sixty. Okay. So I think we're good. All right. Alright, 
so let's get started. So if anyone hasn't done so already, if you're wanting to follow along with the lesson, I put it in a uh, link for the Code Academy uh, course in um, the description. So if anyone wants to go ahead and follow along, you can do that. But I'm going to go ahead and start on the first module. So, well, I think before I get into that, um, more or less I wanted to kind of do this for basically being able to, you know, help other people um, explore the area of, like, uh, programming and other um, areas with like game development and you know I g have been trying to do a lot of this kind of myself lately so I thought it would be pretty cool to reach out and be able to have like a group of people to be able to um, communicate with so Hopefully, I get enough people to follow along, and we'll be able to maybe create like a, an actual project later on. Um, I'm right now trying to do all the bare basics, and then we'll start moving on to kind of like 2D pixel development to be able to, you know, create sprites and stuff and assets, and then move from this environment from this teaching into an actual text editor which I'll show how to set all that up when it comes down to it so anyway this is the first module where um, as you can see we're gonna be learning uh, we're starting off with the basics so in the programming world the first ever program you'll learn and be able to write is the hello world as you can see up here this is the first thing uh, kind of introduction you'll see in any sort of uh, programming language or anything that you do and you know bear with me you know I haven't really done a lot of this stuff before but you know hopefully um, and I mean by stuff, I mean like being able to stream and, you know, interact with everyone while I'm actually doing stuff. So, it might be a little cringy, but I uh, <laughs> have, to, have to bear with it. Anyway, so for the first one, we're going to do Hello World. Um, so, basically, it just... In this, it shows like it just says the introduction of you know what the course is going to cover. Um, pretty much what I've already told you. Um, this is the Phaser Three environment. So w whenever you are finished, like once we're able to um, create the our first game, we can actually move that from the web or to the uh, on your on your phone so I think that that's very flexible um, and that's why I decided to start with that because job um, HTML JavaScript CSS those are kind of the um, website languages you know to developing sites and so I thought figured I would start out with phaser because it's it's it seems to be an easier um, uh, format to or framework to understand so going on this basically just tells you you know you're starting a brand new uh, language you know welcome and it uh, just uh, wants you to modify this little uh, this source code right here 
So right here, as you can see, okay, right here, you have a function, which is create, and then you have all this text inside of it right here. So a function is pretty much just like a collection of code that so instead of like writing a piece of code, piece of code here, and then having to type it all out again later on, you can actually put it into here, into this little box right here, which we've named function create. And everything in create will actually create all those objects and text and everything for your game. And then, as you can see right here, in this object right here, in the configuration object, um, in the scene, it, it, um, it instantiates the create, uh, the, the create function. So it's called in here. So that's why you can see, you know, Cody's adventure in CoWorld right here. And then right here, it takes, you know, as you can see, you have, uh, four arguments. You have the position of the X, the Y axis, and then you have your text, and then this right here modifies the font, like how big you want your font, and then this is the, like, what font family you want. And then fill right here basically uh, gives it uh, the color. So, breaking this down this is your space it's basically saying that this which means create this is going to add text to this and then it's going to put here at this location so for the first it wants you to a good game needs a good title screen we're going to cover all the code in this example in this lesson but first let's see if we can create a title screen for the game so change the text in the first call of this dot add dot text the title from uh, Cody's Adventures in CoWorld to the name of your game. So we'll go right here and as you can see uh, where it has Cody's Adventures and then it goes to a new line this back the backslash n means that it's telling the computer that this is going to be on a new line. So uh, let's put this the adventures of Amarak and then we'll put that backslash n for a new line uh, the goblin sure alright and if you can see that, I don't think you'll be able to see this yet. But right here, now it wants, for the second one, it wants us to change the By Code Academy to the name or the publisher. So we'll go ahead and just put my name. All right. Okay. So. As you can see, this function will print out to the scene here. Um, the com and this is a it's so this all is stored in this uh, variable here, which, as you can see, is labeled a const. So what this means right here is everything stored in this variable when it's called can't be changed. So nothing in here will be changed by anything, and that prevents anything from else uh, throughout the program affecting here, and you know end up screwing it up. So the background color will be here, um, uh, so will stay this color. Um, the create variable won't, or the create function won't disappear. Everything should stay the same. So right here, it, the new uh, a game variable will be created with a new uh, phaser dot game, and then it's going to call this configuration, and then that's what you can see it displaying on here.
So we'll go ahead and run this. Okay, so as you can see, it's running off of the page. So instead of putting this backslash n right here, we can actually put it right here. And then we'll run this again and see, as you can see, now we have a lot more, more space. Mm. All right. <laughs> and then we'll put that there. See? And now we've met both of the requirements. So it's actually not, it's really not that hard once you actually kind of see what everything is doing. So all you got to know is that this dot add dot text in the create function will create any ver uh will create any text on your in your game. And then displaying this position right here, like I said this is the x and this is the y. So if we wanted it let's say over to the left more, we can change that. And it brings it more to the left. And then if you want it over way over there, you bring it over there. So like changing it to 200 will bring it all the way to the right. So we'll bring that back to 50. Run it again. And it'll be back into the middle. Alright. So we'll go to the next lesson from here. Alright. So we're going to go ahead and draw a circle. So in this exercise we're going to use the this uh, dot add dot circle and then we're going to give the x and the y coordinate and then you will have the radius of how big this circle you want to be and then you also have the color so you'll have four different uh, par parameters put uh, put in so if we scroll down so it wants to create us our own circle uh, and so inside the create function right here, you find circles number one through four. So one, two, three, four. Okay. Create circle five and give it the x, y radius. Okay. F fill in the color. Oh. I think I've already done that before. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and just redo it. It'd be fine. Okay, so in here we'll declare it a let type of variable. So this variable called let, what uh, uh, I should say the type, the let type variable, actually lets you store all this information in the variable, but you can actually do it without changing a global variable. So if we were to put like let out, out, out here and say this is my variable and then give it a value of 5. So if I were to put it in here this will stay 5. But if I were to call it down here I could do well this uh, is my variable and I can make this 10. So now that is changed from 5 to 10 down here. See? But if I put it in here inside this function it actually changes. So it will stay 10 out here but if I were to put it in here it would be let's say uh, 2. So inside here, it is named. It's it stays consistently as two. So basically, it goes by scope. So wherever it's declared at, it'll let you redefine the variable no matter where it is in your in your code. But it, it keeps it inside here, so that way you don't um, end up redeclaring the variable out here, and then you end up messing up your code. So that's what the let the let does. It keeps it in your scope. So we'll do let. So anyway, let's do, let's add this circle. 
So let circle five equal this dot add dot circle and then the position let's bring it hmm I want let's declare so the width of our game is 450 and the height is 600 so let's go over I would say 90 and then we'll go down by 500 pixels and then we'll make this kind of kind of big uh, mm, I'll, s I'll I'll put it about 80 alright and we have to figure out what um, what we want to do for the color so right here as you can see this is a hexadecimal value so let's see if we can find a random color so let's find a shade of blue hexadecimal value and so as you can see this is the value of the hexadecimal but let's see if we can find a specific color so let's make it I kinda like this one so the number 59 uh, hashtag 59 BFFF so we'll put that hashtag 59 BFFF alright gonna double check that wanna make sure Fifty nine BFF. All right, that should be right. Should be okay. All right, so let's see if that runs. Okay, so what are we actually missing? Hmm. Did you create circle five using the like keyword? Sure did. All right, so this equal to this dot add circle yep okay so where are we missing it oh okay so this is not taking it as an actual that it's it's thinking of it as a number or sh as an actual number so we have to I believe put that specifically in quotes so basically it's specifically telling you telling the computer this is what we're wanting <sighs> okay so hmm maybe it just doesn't like that one let's try a different one hashtag one two six one a zero Nope. One, two, six, one, eight, zero. Hmm. And now I am a little confused on why it's not filling that color. Do I have to actually declare it? Do I have to put it in? Uh, give me a second. Now I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> What's going on, Joan? As you can see, I'm having a little difficulty trying to figure out why that's not wanting to explicitly do it and I can look through the documentation but this as as you are aware this one is supposed to give you your color as you can see here this green one circle is where we're at right now and you can do RGB colors as well like red uh, green blue and you know spec uh, set specific values but yeah I don't maybe it needs that X 
Maybe that's why I couldn't. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, so maybe it needs the 0x. 1a0. Alright, so see what this what this gives us. Okay, so you need the 0x before it and then the hexadecimal number in order for that to work on here. Okay, well, we figured that out. I do pretty good work <laughs> when I'm not flubbing it up. But yeah, um, Jones, uh, I don't know if you'll have to probably go back a bit to see what each thing does if you want to know. If not, you can always ask, and I will just go through it again. I don't mind it, though. Okay, so anyway, we made our circle right here using the uh, declaring the variable storing this value within the variable within the create function calls the create function within the configuration object and then adds that object to the phaser dot game to put it on the screen and that's why you have all these circles so that that is the main um, that's the main uh, gist of of this whole of uh, phaser is mostly you'll have you know around three three four functions um, one is to load all your assets in um, the next one is to create all the objects and then you have an update to make the the objects do things and update the game to make it like run and do and uh, jump and you know that sort of stuff so anyway out we're done with the second we'll go ahead to the next alright so in this one I'm gonna go ahead reset so we're gonna go ahead as you can see the function where I said that we were gonna create the preload this is where all your assets go so if you want to do um, if you wanted to put a little guy in there or if you want to create platforms or if you want to create anything for your games this is where all your stuff will go so alright so the first thing for loading your sprite in here so first things first as you can see on the side you got to load your image so uh, well, first, what does it want us to do? So we'll have to create a sprite named Cody and use the location of where it's found. So we'll do this. So we're telling this, like the game, dot add, or no, we're going to load it. So this dot load dot uh, image and then we're going to give it the name Cody key and then we're going to we're going to tell the computer where it's loaded at so we're going to put this address inside here in the second field all right so we loaded our first sprite so this dot load dot image the key of what the name of your image is and then where you found it Okay, so this could be on a website or this could be within a folder that the same uh, the game is located in. So now we have the pleasure of adding the sprite officially to your game on the screen to pop it up here. So to do this, we'll do a this dot add dot sprite. Okay. And then we have to give the location of your X and Y where you want it to go. So let's put 50 
and then we'll drop it all the way down to uh, um, so the height is 600 we can make 500 and then I believe you put which object you want here so we'll do the Cody alright so we can go ahead and run that and there he is there's a little guy right there so this dot load image in the preload and then to create your ob object that you're wanting we load it into here within the create function and as you can see if it wants to be added to the game you have your create but also right here you can actually see we have the preload now so you have this preload function now on the within the scenes so all of this will be populated within your game so the cons game new phaser game okay so I think we're good with this one let's go ahead and do the next one so now we have a background image so we're gonna go ahead here now for this one we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna load our image in so this dot load dot image and then the name so this would be BG for background and then where are we going to locate this at so um, well actually we are going to insert the sky because it wants us to do that for this requirement so we'll load in the sky and then we'll put in the URL address right here so now we've loaded this image the sky that will be used as our background okay so now we'll go ahead and do a this dot add dot image okay oh forgot our semicolon we'll make sure we include that okay so we'll add the image and where do we want this we'll do we'll center it by let's say 200 so where is it this is 450 so I would say 200 is kind of a good in-between point X and then we'll drop it down another 200 so we'll so we'll put it there and then once again we have to declare what we're doing so sky like what object we're wanting to use and then we'll go ahead and run it there you go see so this second oh I just have to hit run again because we did both of these so as you can see now we have our own background on the in the back of the scene that's pretty cool alright so anything that we've missed so don't need a sprite object we'll be using a this dot add image instead of this dot add sprite so all images and everything that you load is all going to be the same however whenever you're actually creating the object itself is when it actually becomes different okay so let's go ahead and Uh, let's go ahead and change to the next one all right so now they're kinda taking away a lot of the uh, uh, a lot of the essential parts so now it's breaking it down that we actually now have to create our own config from scratch so let's go ahead um, as you remember uh, well before we start that um, for your game uh, let's read this little part up here we've been making game objects in the existing game well let's take a step back and think about how to create a phaser game from the beginning uh, we can do that by calling the new phaser dot game uh, and the phaser dot game by itself creates a new canvas element and appends it to your HTML document so in, in web development HTML is the language that 
is pretty much the bare bones. It's, it makes up the whole structure of a website. It basically tells all your blocks of where you want everything to go. It adds your text. And uh, the language of CSS is what um, takes all uh, that makes HTML, in a sense, pretty. So it may, you know, that's when you can, you know, adjust your font sizes. You can do more, uh, you can adjust, um, you know, the color of things. Uh, of of elements you can uh, whatever whatever you can think of pretty much it it uses a lot of um, it it's like calligraphy for uh, for regular handwriting uh, regular handwriting is okay but calligraphy makes it a lot more enjoyable to view so that's the best uh, kind of analogy I can make for that. But anyway, so we're going to make the core component of the game, which is your configuration. So let's go ahead and let's declare a const variable. So const means, again, that it's not going to change. So we're going to name it config. And then we're going to put curly, curly brackets and curly braces. And that means everything in here is going to be stored in the configure in the configuration um, variable, which is uh, what we're doing with these curly braces is we're essentially making it an object. So let's go ahead and let's create. It wants us to do the width, height, and the background color. So as we know with uh, what we've seen in the previous ones, our width would be 450 pixels, and we'll uh, we'll have a height of 600 pixels, and then we want a background color. So, background color, we want to make this equal to I don't know. Let's find ourselves another good one in here. So. I personally like teal. And this one is Viking. So 4A D E D E. So 4A D E D E. Alright. Now we can run this. And what is missing? Feel for this game. Start by declaring. Is config defined? Alright, looking at this. Ah! That's why we put a semicolon there. Okay? So usually what you do is for the semicolons, that's to end, you know, every piece of code. That's just the essential piece of that's just the uh, the essential piece to tell the computer that hey, this part is is done. But in here, you use commas because essentially everything looks like this to the computer. See? It's not really like a like a command or a sentence. It's just basically showing that hey, all of this stuff right here is inside here. So in an object, you just put a comma, you put another comma when you have another ver uh you have another um you have another item in your object and then when you get to the last object you just don't put anything there so this is done but as you can see there's nothing there yet and the reason for that is we didn't create a new game object to say hey we need to create the game so we'll do a const and then we'll do a um, what do we want to name it? Game. We'll just do game. So new phaser dot game, and then in order for it to, so we have this, but we need it to display in here because it's saying, okay, we have this new game, but what are we actually going to put, you know, put on the screen? So we're going to get, give it the configure. We're going to pass it the config. Uh, object here. And then it'll display the screen and say, hey, 
I know what I'm displaying now. And it's right here, as you can see. So, I believe there is a type. So, as you can see, what we were talking about with the canvas earlier is the canvas, you know, is what gives you, you the ability in HTML to typically do, uh, like, animations or make games and that sort of stuff. It gives you, a like, a blank sheet to do work on. Well, on here, you can do Canvas or you can do the open, uh, I believe, WebGL. So there's two different uh, ways that the code is being produced. So I would say type phaser.auto, I believe. I think so. If I go back one, what was the... Yeah, it was the phaser dot auto. Okay, so as you can see, this is the type. So it basically just automatically uses the best um, configuration to display on your um, on your computer on, on the web. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the next one. All right. So let's reset this. All right. So now that we got the configuration, we got the game, we have it all set up. Now, we really can't do much, obviously, without the f main functions. So we got to create the function, and we're gonna give it the create. Okay. And now we have a space to create all of our objects. But even though we have the create here, we don't really have uh, I guess it's wanting to that's why we don't have the per we're not putting the preload in here. So, hmm. okay, so what it wants us to do, we've already created the, that, we've already uh, created the function called create, now it wants us to create text. So, as we remember, this dot add dot text, okay, where you want it added, so we can do 50 and then a hundred see how that kinda looks and then okay this is some example text see alright this is some example text and then if you want to you can you know, create your font, and you can go by, you know, 40 pixels, and then your font family can be Times New Roman, and then you can do your fill with, you know, 0x, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay. Uh, I believe it's that. I'm not mistaken. Either way, we'll see that soon. So, this is done. Now, again, this won't populate on the screen. So, there's the create, and then when we add this, you can see that it's not creating on the screen. And the, the reason for that is, as you can see right here, this comment right here describes that we need to add the scene in the configuration here. So, let's put scene, and then, as you can see, with the with the colon, but then we also have all of our scenes right here that we get to add. And then we'll put the create. Oh. Alright, 
and that's saying that okay now we're going to put this function inside this configuration and we're gonna run it inside the game so we'll go ahead and hit run ah that is too big so I could probably run this let's change it to 12 yeah see so this is the cool thing is you can actually modify the font and you can describe how big or how little you want this to be so let's go with a 25 pixel right here see that seems like a good medium so essentially this could be your title screen so you can add your text here you can probably add some buttons later on once we learn how to do that um, and you can make those buttons do things when they're clicked um, like going to another scene or a new uh, new area for your game but yeah this is how you get your text so as you can see we add the configuration uh, or add the scene to the configuration properly and it was able to create example text so we're good on this one we'll head to the next scene all right so now we're getting into a good position where as you can see we're going to be able to move our objects in our game so so far it's stationary so right now as you can see we have the preload that puts our image in the game you have the create that creates the object but now we have a new function which this function will be function update and this function let's see um, I could say it but the update function that adds motion this is what this is what's going to continuously update the things within your game um, so you, you're able to load it you're able to create but this is what actually makes your your objects move and be able to do um, all the things they're supposed to be doing so now let's go ahead um, we've set up a game with our Cody sprite let's make Cody walk to the right okay so we created the update function alright now in order for us to manipulate this it will have to be as you can see we'll have to take Cody and then we gotta take as you can see we gotta take its X value so we'll do Cody dot X so we're gonna take Cody here we're going to cling on to its X value but then we're also going to increment it by one so you can see so we're gonna take this this plus equals to one so essentially what this means is it's going to take Cody dot X plus one but in the in for shorthand it's going to be it's a lot easier just to write it this way so we'll go ahead and hit run so we did that correct so now we have to figure out why it's not so let's look preload create there we go we don't have the update function in here so how is it supposed to run if it's not even in your game all right see and we got going by one now if you want to you can actually increase this by five like you're like well that's not really fast enough I want them to go faster and he just speeds off of the page so that's how you can modify your values on there but we'll set it back to one all right so as like a recap we added the update function we told our object which was Cody that we want its X value to increment plus equal by one so it's going it's adding one to this X every second or every 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 um, every picture or every refresh it's it's adding that 
one. So this is why you're able to see this x going up by incrementing by one value. And then we added the update uh, function to our scenes. So that way it actually executes. So as you can see here, this is a new thing that uh, we've been introduced to is these fun is these comments. So comments don't actually become executed. These comments um, basically j are ran uh, are not ran as code. So you can put whatever you want there, and it won't, and the computer will overlook it and go to the next next step. So. So you don't have to. Um, uh, so you don't have to worry about you know whatever comments you put in there. You don't have to worry about um, you know if you mistype something, you put something in here. Y y you don't have to worry about it um, being ran. So, all right, give me one second. Sorry about that. The kiddo ended up uh, getting out of bed. She's about to lose her tooth here soon. So I'm sure she's excited about that. I know it's a kind of a lot of information, but like if anyone had any questions or, you know, need a recap on anything, you know, after watching this, you know, you're more than welcome to ask me or, you know, um, message me outside and, you know, I can give you a better answer. And so that way, you know, we don't have to answer in, in later, um, uh, late, later uh, sessions. And so I know bits and pieces of all this, but eventually we're going to get to some points where this is all kind of new for me as well so you know don't you know don't feel like uh, I know everything <laughs> I just know a lot of the um, the foundations the fundamentals and that sort of stuff here so you know that's why it seems a lot more easier because I've done a lot more classes on you know these types of things um, and some things you know I can forget as well so that's why we I'm actually wanting to do these these sessions and you know being able to learn with everyone else so all right Could take a little pause here for a quick second. Just kind of kind of chill out for a moment, and then we'll get right back on it here in a sec.
Okay. So, got a little short break. Just kind of look at some stuff. I know it's a little bit later in the day, so not going to get a whole lot of people watching. But I'm going to go ahead and go to the next session. So, all these will be available to view for everybody. You know, if you guys missed anything, you guys can go back, um, kind of look at things again. And hopefully, you know, later on when a lot more people start to join, you know, they could join us on future projects and kind of remind me on some of how this stuff, um, you know, is implemented. Because I think about this now, but then when I'm actually doing it again, I'm probably gonna have to look up documentation, and it's gonna be it's gonna be annoying. So we'll figure it out. All right, so let's go to the next one. So the storing state. All right. So uh, becomes important to pass information between our scene functions. Create will need to be updated and update. For instance, there are a few ways we can accomplish this. Create a goal variable for everything. Could do that. Attach important variables to the scene itself by creating a new property for this within the scene method. So, yes. Um, focus on creating a game state object and manipulate that from now on. And this is how they're going to implement that. So, using the game state. And then using the game state dot circle, that circle dot rectangle um, dot circle. So it's basically storing all er, the whole game, like all the objects, into one one consumed uh, um, one one object. It's wanting to store everything in this object, in this game state object. Okay, so first things first. All right, so we'll store the game state object. All right, so that's created. So now we gotta create a circle. So we'll go. Uh, we'll do the game state dot circle storing that so game state circle so that will be this dot add dot circle and then obviously we want it I kinda want it in the middle so it's 450 we'll do 200 again um, and then we want it kinda towards the top so let's do um, hmm. I don't know I don't know how how much 50 will be and then we'll make this ball kinda kinda big but not too big and then oh xy radius obviously and uh, the fill color so yeah so we'll do 0x and then we'll put a hexadecimal we'll do my favorite color so hashtag 4a dd uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. uh, so for E D D. Mm. We'll see how that works. So will this run? Okay, so we got it up here. So that's good. So that's where we're going to place it. And now we want the object. So we'll do to go down. So we want it to kind of kind of fall. So instead of using the X though, which is going to go left and right in a horizontal, we want it to go vertical. So we're going to do this. So we'll do the game game state where the circle um, dot circle. So we're going to call it game state, and then we're going to get the Y, and then we're going to plus equal it by I think it was okay one. So we'll go ahead and see what that does. And that should bring it down. Yep, as you can see right here. Cool. 
So, downwards, and we've met all the qualifications for this. So, created the game state variable. So, let's do another, just review this one more time. <laughs> because we handle all of our scene information in different function, it becomes important to pass information between our scene functions. So, right, so going from create, update, and then, you know, obviously out to the, um, out to the game. And so, uh, so we create, we need the update and update. Okay. So, right. So the valid to focus on creating a game state object and manipulating. So it's just going to be one object and just and manipulating this one object itself instead of, you know, manipulating several other objects. So this is done. As you can see again, we did incremented it by one, but we can also do five and it can just fall a lot faster. So that's pretty cool. Oh well, there's really no value in Q. So by one. Okay. So now the best part that we get to learn now is the amazing world of input. Now we finally get to to handle the input that we receive from the users. So, like that we can actually, as it said here, we can actually play. All right. So, in the game state, we now have an on color as this, and we have an off color as this. So there's two objects in this uh, we have uh, two, not objects, we have two uh, descriptors of this object. It has two attributes to this object, S or selectors. So we have an on color, which will be this color, and then the off color, which is this color. And then you have the rectangle right here, and then you have the second rectangle right here. So here we want to we have different ways. So reading this, in order to interact with a game object, we need to call the set interactive method on it. The set interactive method tells Phaser to listen in, in for interactive events on a game object. After calling set interactive, we can provide the game object with an event handler. Now, the event handler is a function that gets called when a specific interaction has happened to the game object. So, in other words, once a certain thing has happened to the game object or an event has happened, it does something. So, like, if you press a certain button, this is what happens when you press the button to this, this game object does something. Or if you click on it, um, you know, the object will do something. It's like that. So, the pointer down, uh, you have four right here um, for this event handler. This event gets called when the mouse button has been pressed but not released on the game on the game object. So if you're holding it down but it has been released, pointer up, this event gets called when the mouse button has been released over a game object. So if you go like this and you click, you know, it would do something. If you, a pointer over gets called when the mouse hovers over an object, and then you have a pointer out when it will move somewhere else from the object. Like if it's already on an object but you move it out. That is the move out. So let's go ahead and what's it want us to do here? Switch work. So it's wanting us to... Oh, okay. So hold on. So you have this. This circle and then you have the pointer up and then the function of what it wants to do so this dot fill color so when this is clicked like when you click and you press like you click but it doesn't work but when you release it that's when the event is called and then it changes the color so in order to do this 
you also have an on method. So to add the event listener itself onto an object, you have to use the on on method. So another word for method is a function. So a function and a method could be used interchangeably, but a method is used within an object. That is the di that's usually the difference. Is a method is usually used um, for an object, and a function is used outside of like an object. So those are the main differences. Um, so we're going to go ahead and change. You're gonna uh, we're gonna reassign this fill color. So we're gonna make it switch. So we're gonna set the game state into uh, rectangle two. So for rectangle two, we're going to set it as interactive. So game. So we have our game state. Dot rectangle two. And then we're gonna. Uh, is it a dot set interactive or is it a? It is okay. Yeah, it was. It was a. It was a dot set. In. Oops. Set interactive. Okay, and then create the point listener. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do the game state dot rectangle two dot on and then what is this? We're gonna do the pointer up and then we're going to do a function and then it's going to be empty. I believe that's what it was, right? Yeah, okay. We're doing it. We're doing all right. So, uh, well, it's pointer up. So we're going to do the pointer up. Oh, got to make it two. You have your pointer up, and then you have to use the function as the second argument. Because you're telling it to do this, you're labeling when the event should be called, and then you have the uh, the function of what you want it to do. So inside the pour up listener, switch the colors of a rectangle. So set the fill color of rectangle one to uh, game state off color. So when that happens, we'll just do the game state dot rectangle one. Um, we're going to set this to um, Ah, that's right. Game state dot off color. Okay. So see basically what we're doing it here is we're accessing the game state dot off color up here. See what's inside it here? So we're saying that this rectangle right here is going to equal this color right here. And then the game state dot rectangle two will uh, became become the on color all right so let's go ahead okay so we ran it if I click this, Well, it's supposed to do something. Hmm. Let's create. So we did the set interactive pointer up event. We did. Over game state rectangle two. Game state. Dot rectangle two dot on hmm. 
So we had it here where the game state rectangle one is the off color. And then the game state for the rectangle two is the on color. Wait a minute. Mm. Wait a minute. Oh, hold on. I got it. Huh, <laughs> set the fill co <sighs> That's what it is. Duh. So we run this. There we go. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. So, what happened was, so for the rectangle one, we need to access the fill color property of the rectangle. And then we tell it that the color is going to be the off color, which is up here. And then you have the fill color for this will be the on color. So when you click the rectangle 2, it switches colors. Now it wants us to switch it back. So we could go ahead and, you know, uh, do this. If we're wanting it to, let's let we can put an if uh, statement in here. So it would say like if now if the game state dot rectangle one dot fill uh, color is equal to uh, is equal to Wait, does it use equals? Nah, I'll, I'll just I'll just do it this way for now. If it's equal to the game state uh, uh, dot on color, then we want to switch it. See. And then else. So what it's looking for is if the game color. So we're going to click it. Now if this rectangle 1 or this rectangle 2 is equal to the off color, we're going to switch it. We're going to switch it around. Now else. Whatever happens else, we're going to go ahead and do the game state. Well, instead of having to type all this out, we'll just go ahead and copy this, put this in here, and then we will just switch these to on color and then off color. So that way now, no matter what we press, it should um, flip back and forth. So let's do this. See? Now you can flip it on and off and they'll s keep switching. So what we did was um, whenever the game state uh, rectangle 2 it puts an event listener so it's listening for when something happens uh, to an object which is the pointer up so when we click it and then we release it it switches. So, and then within the function, so we're telling it what type of event we want to call, and then the function here, um, the function here will do what we're wanting it to do when that event is fired. 
So what we did here was we put an if statement. So like, okay, so if this happens, I want the game to do this. But if any, but if this isn't met or anything else is different than this right here, then I want it to do this. So there are other things called else ifs. Like if I want specific other conditions, I can do it that way. But you like an if and else statement. This is pretty much the bare bones of the only thing you really need to know. So that's a little bit more uh, knowledge in your think tank. So go ahead and run that. We're all good here, and we can switch between. So that's pretty good. So what we did here was we set the game, the rectangle two, to being interactive. See, it, we can't do it here because we only put it one on rectangle two. So we can only do rectangle two, and we set it interactive. So this is the only thing that can be uh, interactable. So there you go. So anyway, we got that under our belt. Let's go to the next part. And this part is keyboard events. Which is great. So we have two types of keyboard events. If you want specific keyboard events, you as you can see right here, you have the this dot input dot keyboard dot on. So uh, if you, whenever you see this on, you know automatically that that's an event listener. So that means it's waiting for an event, something like as it says, key down A by pressing the A key. We'll do something, and as you can see in this here. This shows that you know this is our object, and that this dot input dot key on and W will change the circle to this color. Well, in this one, we would make him go up, make our uh, Cody here go up. So, oh, we also have these other ones called cursor keys. So there's the up, down, left, right, shift, and space buttons. And you can use the create cursor keys. So to a cursor key object we can use detect when they've been pressed. We can save those as property in our game state object and click if they're pressed within our update function. So we can you know, see how we have this? We could declare the create, like there's cursors, this dot input keyboard, create cursor keys. So this uses your um, up, left, down, right buttons, and that creates that. And then this um, tells it what to do in the update. Um, checking if is down. So, all right. Okay, so what it's wanting us to do is add the cursors. So we could do the game state dot cursors. So we're adding this to the game state object. So cursors, and then uh, this dot add dot. Uh, oh no, this dot input dot keyboard dot create cursor keys. Alright, so now with this right here and storing this object into here, we can now use the cursor keys. So if game state dot cursors dot um, is it le what's with left dot is down uh, wait, is this 
is down. It is capitalized. Okay. So yeah. So if it is down, we can do the game state. Oh, camel case that game state dot. Um, Cody. We want him the x value to decrease because we want him to go left and we'll do it and it says here it wants to go by five. Uh, oh, but it wants us to do the right so if it's going down we want to add okay because you're going positive uh, when you're going to the right, you're going positive. When you're going to the left, you're going negative. When you're going up, you're going negative. And when you go down, you're going positive. So, a little bit to remember, but you'll be able to understand um, later on. So, we go right. That's awesome. He can, he can go right, but he can't kind of go left. So this, remember when I was telling you that the else if comes in? So else if here game state dot cursors dot right dot is down. Uh no, no 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 not right. Left. So if the left is down, we're going to go to the game state dot cody dot x and we're going to decrease by 5 and so we'll run this so see now we can go left and right because we declared it now if you wanted to we can create <coughs> the event listener with the this dot on or no no this dot uh, input dot is it on to create the custom event ah keyboard dot on and then you have the uh, key key down and then we're gonna go with a and then the function as a second argument and then what's going to happen when the A key is pressed down? Well, we're going to go ahead and Cody will, oh wait, 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 no, be the game state dot Cody dot X and then we're going to, for going left, remember we're going to go this, we're going to go negative um, 5. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it. So if we use the A key, see, as you can see, though, we have to hold it down, the A key down, in order for it to um, to move. As you can see, the key down. Once it notices the key is down, it's going to press A. Um, so there's that. I wonder. You can create an event listener for each one, I believe, but you push I say the void replicating the same code for to find define an anonymous function. Yeah. 
So technically, Well, we could do this exact same thing, but I'm trying to figure out a way to not have to keep doing, you know, this whole entire, if this is key is down, then do this, if this key is down. Like, I'm trying to figure out a way to, I could probably make a switch. And a switch is basically just a series of if statements. Like if this is this, do this. If this is this, do this. It just makes it a lot easier. But I have to figure out what key down is what and how to detect that. So anyway, if I run this, um, if the D button's down, it's going to go to the right. If I hold down the A button, it goes to the left. If I use the right arrow key, it goes faster. If I go left arrow key. So essentially now we can make our guy do whatever we want. And if we don't like this sprite being, we don't want him being there, we don't have to. We can just make him, instead of being 200, throw it down to 500. Oh, and he is very, very uh, low. Let's bring that back up to 400. That'd be okay. There we go. See? Now, this looks like a regular game where you would have the ground underneath and you can move left and right. Cool. So, yeah. Okay. So, recapping, all we had to do was we named the game st uh, game state dot cursors, and then we added this dot input dot keyboard dot create cursor keys. So that way we can create a cur we can store that into game state to be able to let us use uh, cursor keys. And now we have the game state dot cursors, and now since cursor uh, has the keys, we can now determine that if the left arrow button is down, we can now go left. If the right button is down, we can go right. And you know, etc. You can go up. You can go down. Um, if you be able to jump, that's uh, you'll have we'll have to figure out physics and all that later. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. I think we're good here. Just have to remember that this dot input dot keyboard dot cur create cursor keys is what gives us the ability to use these here, and then the this dot input dot keyboard on is what uh, let's just uh, define the function for a um, event. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, so sound. <sighs> okay, so. Mm. So as we can see here, Whenever we load our sound into the game, we have a this dot load dot audio. So you have the this dot load dot image that we've been using, but now we have to do an audio, and it wants to use the incredible sound. So we'll just go ahead and it's kind of the same stuff that we've been doing, although it's just mi minor little changes. So this dot load dot audio. And this one is the incredible. 
We'll name it incredible. And then we're going to pull it from this right here. We're going to add it here. Oh, my bad. I didn't give us... There we go. Had to put the single quotes in there. Okay. So the single quotes indicate the, uh, a string. Without them, it actually, uh, it'll break. So, so anyway, if you want to know when we click on something, you I don't know if you can hear that or not, but every time you click on it, it fires an event that this is going to go ahead and um, it's going to say, hey, you know, every time the pointer comes up, it's going to play this sound. So now that we declared the audio, we're going to do a game state dot incredible. So we're going to create the incredible um, um, selector attribute. We're going to create the the attribute inside the game state object. So we're going to create this new one and this dot sound add we're going to name it oh we're going to do the we're going to grab the incredible from up here there we go so we got it now it's add to the create and we're going to add an event listener so game state dot um, incredible dot on and now when we're gonna do the pointer up because uh, to make it fire whenever we release click and we're gonna create a function alright and then we're gonna tell the game state dot incredible to play when it is pressed use the play function when it's pressed Okay, so should be good. Uh, so we added, so we created the incredible for the game state. This dot sound dot add. All right. Um, we we add the. Uh, they actually made the incredible box right here. So by this dot add dot rectangle, and then giving the specifications of it, and then the fill color, all right, and it's set to interactive so that we're able to use it. Um, this add the text to the incredible box, and then the function that whenever it is pressed, it's going to play, so we can run it. And then when we hit it, oh, well, something is wrong. So let's look. So the incredible dot on. Oh, well, so here's the problem. It, this is the sound, but we're actually using the incredible box when the incredible box is clicked is when it's using because and we can't use the other object because it's not really an object to click on so we'll go ahead and fix that see and it works perfectly so the game state uses the incredible box uses the pointer up function uh, pointer up um, call method or fire method and then it uses the function to d uh, to um, play the incredible sound bite all right all right and this is a full looks like a full review so all the tools we just learned, everything we need to make a huge number of games. Think about what you've 
played and tried to imagine what they break down the following steps. Loading in ath assets, uh, setting up a scene by creating all the interactive game objects, adding event listeners and handlers to those game objects, adding the scene each frame, detecting if buttons are pressed, and triggering events based on those button presence. Alright, so... So the first thing we want to do is let's set up our game. So we're going to do the let the game state because that's going to be our crucial variable. And then we're going to do the function oh, uh, preload. So we're going to do the preloader assets, the function create okay and then we have a function update all right we have our const uh, configuration to make the game yep and then we have to wrap it all up we have a const game equals a new phaser dot game and then we put our config within there alright so now we made the bare bones of this project right here so let's see what it's wanting us to do it wants the width height and the default background color so we'll go ahead and start this out so We'll, we'll give it the type first. Remember, phaser dot um, auto is to determine oh, um, if it, uh, which which element it wants to use. All right, so we have the width. Let's use what we've already been using. We'll do 450 pixels, and then the height. We will put it at 600 pixels. And then, okay, so now we want the background color. So the background color. And I believe it wants us to use a specific one. Oh. Okay. Uh, not sure what to use. Put a plum. Okay, that's fine. Well, I kind of want to use our one we've been using. So the 4ADD. All right. So 0x. And for a d d, okay. And we're gonna now put in the scenes. So we'll go ahead and do that. And see, we have three that we're gonna put in here: the preload, the create, and the update. So preload, create, the update. So. Right now, it looks like we have every, almost everything that we need to get started. So, uh, on the game first. Already did that. Um, preload. Already did that. Okay. Let's load in Cody. So, let's do the. Oh man. Uh, this dot image oh no no load dot image because we want to load our sprite in here name Cody naming it Cody and the place where we're gonna get that PNG that image from is right here okay so now we have Cody um, what's it want us to do okay so obviously we have to create this. Oh, now we have to create it using the game state dot Cody, and we're gonna store this within the the game state um, object. So this dot add dot sprite. I'm gonna store that. Okay, and. Where are we going to place him? Um, so, let's think. 
we could do 50 again and our normal perimeter will put it at 400 and then we're going to declare that it's Cody all right so now the Cody uh, um, attribute or selector I have to know remember what the name for that officially is but it this is now stored within the game state object and this attribute is now now a part of that game state object so now I believe mm, new key pass object contain preload and create alright yep yep now we have to of course add of how we're gonna make our object move so the game states dot cursors equals this dot uh, input dot keyboard dot uh, uh, what was it uh, create cursor keys there we go so now we have the cursor keys let's do the if statement uh, it wants us if we're going down um, to decrease the y value but okay so if it wants us to do that then I gotta move this object to a better area so let's do the 200 and let's put this at 200 so that way it's kind of in the upper middle of the of the game all right so we'll go ahead and if the game state dot, uh, dot I gotta remember the game state game state dot uh, no dot is it dot input no, no, because we're using the cursors. Duh. Cursors dot down is down. Then we want to go ahead and do the game state dot Cody. We want to increase the y value, so we're gonna get uh, the y value of the of the Cody object. And we're going to go down, so we want to add increment by. Uh, let's see, it wants us to do one. Okay, so we're going to increment it by one. Include the update functions we just wrote. Yeah, yada, yada, master basics. Okay. So I'm going to do another thing. I'll do else ifs. So else if the game state dot cursors dot uh, up is down then we are going to uh, call the game state dot Cody object with the y, uh, get the y value since we're going linear on the up and down axis axes and we're going to use subtract because we're going to go up instead of incrementing we're going to we're going to go backwards we're going to deincrement all right and then we'll make another else if for if we want them to go right and as we know we're going to increase the x value of the game object so let's do this So right is down um, game. Oop! I just realized I made a error. Game state dot Cody dot X. Um, we're going to increase that by one, 
and then let's actually this will be it so all else we will then which the only other uh, no we'll have to do another else if because if you press shift or space then it'll do that so it will give us something we don't want so we'll do the game state dot cursors again dot left dot is down and Cody dot oh dot x subtract oh y one okay and all right so it'll d increment to go left it'll increment to go right it'll d increment to go up and increment to go down on the y, y axis and the x axis so let's go ahead and hit run and see what all happens together so look at that we can go it's a little bit slow so we could probably speed these up by five now sitting here and having to do this over and over again will definitely get um, extremely tiring so we can make another global well we can make another variable we can let it call uh, speed so instead of having to write all of that stuff all the time we can make it all one value and all we have to do is just change this one line for it to for it to change so we'll just switch all of these to speed alright so all these now are speed we can run it and now see it goes as fast now if I want to go faster all I have to do is just change the speed variable that we have right here and that we declared here we can run it and look at that now we can move freely and it goes a little faster pretty cool so that is all the basics of how to make your game now I believe we have to go through all these real quick we have to keep running it let it do its thing oh it's not liking it because we don't have a one value for each one of those Yeah, is down. You can see it's totally, totally down. <sighs> okay, so we'll have to, I believe, comment these out real quick because where it's checking is not. <sighs> where it's checking it's not wanting us to use the rest of these uh, the rest of these if statements it's just wanting to check one I believe what but that's you're going down to add one to Cody's y value and that's what's happening I wanna say this is a fluke on this part because that seems to be what we are doing right now oh I get it it probably doesn't like that we use the variable either so as you can see it's really not a huge issue I mean all you have to do is just comment the rest of these out and we can run it huh well now I'm uh, 
a little confused because that is exactly what we have. And it's I mean, you all can clearly see what's happening. <laughs> I'm gonna take this out. Oh, don't wanna do that. Alright, so I'll just cut these out real quick. And this will be the only thing in the update function. Okay. Now it works. It's so if sometimes if it's not exactly the way it's supposed to, it'll do that. So, all right. Now I think we should be good. All right, there you are. Oh yeah, duh. We'll do the speed again. Um, and I put the speed in here because we don't want it to be a global variable. Because we're, we're only just defining the speed in here. Oop. Don't want to put it in there either. There we go. So if you put it in the if statement, then it's just going to make create a variable in here and it won't do it for anywhere else so you want to put it up here so that way it's accessible in all these if statements so there we go now we're at speed 5 again and we're looking good alright so as you can see we're done with the basics if you were to get like the uh, full access with Pro, you could also have an article that you can have. You can take a quiz, and it should be able to compound those, um, help you compound those those fundamentals into your your brain. <laughs> so, but right now we're only doing the free versions, and which is fine enough. It'll just keep going, um, and you can get pretty far with just using, you know, using this. So, all right, so we'll pick this up in the second session. We have, now don't pay attention to all of this source code. As you know, we're not, pro we're not going to, um, we're not going to have to know what every little detail is. As you can clearly see, all of this right here, see, is just drawing, you know, all these individual shapes on here to make a coloring book. But so we're gonna, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna be able to pick colors, and we're going to, you know, be able to, you know, color this in. And um, yeah. So I think we we nailed the fundamentals down. I think we're good. Now we're going to move on to the next basics uh, lesson, and that would be the color of Pegasus. All right, so I will probably, I'll post when the next time I'll host my second session will be. Um, uh, I'll let that know on my page. I plan to possibly open another page or start doing this on a um, on another site, possibly Twitch or YouTube. But so far, I want to make it openly available first to like friends and family um, to see, just kind of get the feel of being able to do, you know, to have that comfort. Uh, the being able to get comfortable with an audience so all right well i thank everyone for joining me in this first session um and i will look forward to have everyone help me in the next one all right 
Have a good night.